experimenting today to the Epson 4800 in the City College of San Francisco Photography Lab. And we are going to print a color image from Lightroom and then the same color image from Photoshop on the Epson Luster paper. So um, from Lightroom, you want to make sure that you've done all your necessary corrections. I'm going to go ahead and say done here. And we're going to move over to the print module. There are um, some different ways to print, print through Lightroom. We're going to be printing a uh, eight and a half by 11. So I'm going to move down to page setup before anything else and just make sure that the printer that I'm printing to is selected and the paper size is selected because that will, uh, setting the paper size first will help me size the final image. So I'm gonna say okay. And my favorite um, option from the left-hand side panel here is maximum size so that you print the whole image. And you'll see that at the bottom here, it's got a larger border it's got a bottom of 0.56, and that is controlled by the printer selection because the Epson 4800 needs to grab onto at least that much to feed through the paper. So from top to bottom, we should go through everything um, quickly. We're going to rotate to fit. No stroke. A stroke puts an edge around it, so I'm going to turn that off. I can change the margins here if I want to by clicking and dragging. And I notice that my cell size or my image size is 10.3 by 8.25. And that's the maximum that will fit on an 8.5 by 11 sheet. So if you need to be exact about the image size uh, because you're fitting it to a mat, you may want to adjust that here. Sometimes if you're trimming the image, um, um, I find it helpful to print what are called um, guide marks, but that actually is not the same as seeing the guides here. I'll show you where that option is in a minute. Uh, we don't want any kind of watermark over the picture, so we're going to make sure all of this stuff is off and make sure watermarking is off. Okay, our print resolution here, anywhere from 240 to 360 ppi is ideal for inkjet printing. Print sharpening you can leave on or off. This is up to you. The media type is, uh, even though it's a luster paper, it has a glossy surface to it. It's not like a fiber mat, so I'm going to leave it on glossy. It's a 16-bit output. And the profile, this is what the most important is the color management box here, is that it's not managed by the printer, but that we select the proper profile. And the proper profile is Pro 4800 Premium Luster Paper, these are both the same. One is representative, I think, of the GSM. If you don't see um, your printer paper listed, you're going to choose Other. And it's going to take you to the Color Sync Profiles folder. And you're going to check the paper um, that you need to print to. OK? So if you have a third party uh, paper, you'll need to load it into the Color Sync Profiles folder and it should show up here. But you can see all of our other Epson papers show up listed here. Um, and this is the PK printer, right? So we actually only want um, the two options that we sell that are PK compatible are the uh, Exhibition Fiber and the Premium Luster. Then I'm going to hit Printer and just double check all of the things that I double checked here down in the page setup. So what we're doing now is going from the Adobe software to the Epson software. And under print, print settings, this is super important. Are we using the paper tray or did we manually feed it through the top of the printer or in the front? And in this case, we're using the paper tray. The emulsion is side down in the paper tray. The media type is important too. Um, when you buy paper, it will tell you which media type to select. This has to do with the thickness of the paper. So um, in this case, we have the premium luster paper selected. And for this particular paper, we don't need to choose 2,880 DPI. That's overkill. Most papers actually max out at 1440 DPI. And um, finest detail on. If you're just doing a, a test, you can choose high speed. If you're doing a final print, you can uncheck high speed. And then, so those are the important uh, things here. The print settings and then the color matching also 
should be set to um, color match color sync. We don't want Epson to control the colors. And we'll hit print. So that's how to print the image from Lightroom. And you'll see the progress bar at the top. And then you should hear a sound. Um, and the paper should start to whir through. Let's take a look at printing this image out of Photoshop. And it's going to be a repeat of what we just did, only less stops, uh, less steps in Lightroom. I actually really like printing out of Lightroom because you can get a consistency in the borders and that's really easy to control on the right-hand side, all the borders and stuff. I don't hear that sound coming out of the printer yet. Do you guys? It is. So I'm going to go ahead and open the image uh, into Photoshop. I went back to the library, edit into Photoshop, and I'm going to take the Lightroom. You might want to do a, a size adjustment, image image size. Um, this is a, I can let the Epson software shrink it down, but you're going to get a sharper result if you shrink it here. Um, and then do your sharpening. And that's a workflow component we'll go over in class. So I happen to know that this is going to be about an, uh, an 8 by 11. 240 is a good resolution. And that's, see, I have the resample checked. Um, so if I uncheck resample, I could actually go up to 320. It is the maximum resolution I can print at. So I'm going to leave that there and say, OK. Notice that it doesn't really change size because the image is staying the same number of pixels. It's just reallocating them 321 in an inch to give me a dimension of 8.5 or 8 by 11. Then I'll choose File, Print. And the same box will come up that came up uh, very similar to the one in Lightroom. Here it thinks I have 17 by 22 paper, so I have to fix that. I'm going to choose a landscape view, or portrait view rather, print settings. I'm going to choose letter, and I'll say save. And so it automatically centers it for me, whereas in Lightroom you can control the borders. This is automatically centering it for me. Do I choose Photoshop manages the colors or printer manages the colors for color images? Photoshop, right, because I want it to bring up that printer profile. So unlike Lightroom, where it just shows me a few of the printer profiles, I see every single one that's in that Color Sync Profiles folder. And this is the, uh, the PLPP. I'm not sure why there are so many. I'll have to investigate that. They're different thicknesses. 16-bit. Um, traditionally, black point compensation stays on. And some people get a shrunk, a sh a, you know, a smaller window. So make sure you expand all of these um, descriptions here. Black point compensation um, has to do, you know, I'm not exactly sure how to describe it accurate, accurately. It says it adjusts for the differences in black points when converting colors. If checked, the full range of the source space is mapped to that of the destination space. This is useful if your document and your printer have about the same size gamut, gamut but one has a darker black than the other. So it's recommended you turn it on. Position and size, um, you can choose to scale to fit. And when I do that, it shrinks it down a little bit because you see that area is the area that the printer needs to grab onto to send through the paper. Now, what I do like about Photoshop over Lightroom is the ability to put crop marks. If you're wanting to trim a print flush, um, you can put crop marks on it um, so that you can better trim it later, which is pretty cool. I'm going to turn it off. None of these really um, adhere to us right now. Uh, when we go to print in um, for our digital negative, we, we will turn the negative printing on. And then I hit print. OK. Now I'm going to cancel this because we already have one in the queue. I don't hear it coming, though. So we'll have to look and see what's going on there in a minute. Now what if, there were, what if this were a black and white image? Let's just pretend that this is a, a black and white image. 
for the sake of the video, okay? The way that we print a black and white image with the Epson printers is different than the color image. We don't need to attach a profile. You can use any old paper. That's what's kind of nice about saving your old inkjet paper. Save it for a black and white picture because it doesn't require a profile. I hit File Print in Photoshop. And I'm going to turn off Photoshop Manages Colors. And I'm going to keep Printer Manages Colors on. Because the Epson printer has a set of uh, different inks that it uses. It puts down a color base and then black over the top to create kind of a rich black and white print. These are going to stay the same. I'm going to, uh, all this can stay the same, but I'm going to check on print settings here. And uh, under color matching now, instead of having color sync, which refers to the color profile selected, I'm going to choose Epson controls the color profiles. And uh, let's see if I can find now under print settings, we're still using manual feed. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, we're using paper tray. Manual feed you would choose if you top loaded or front loaded. Paper tray is for if you tray loaded. Premium luster, I'm going to choose, if I were using like exhibition fiber, I would choose under fine art paper. Um, exhibition fiber is not on here because here it is at the very bottom, okay? Because this is a PK profile, so only the PK papers. Uh, the other papers are grayed out, okay? So instead of color, we choose advanced black and white. And we leave it on the 1440 DPI. Turn off high speed if it's not a proof, it's a, if it's a final print. And then you can tone the image, which is kind of interesting. Neutral is neutral. Cool is very, very cool. Warm is slight sepia. And sepia is really, really warm sepia. And so that can be fun to play with too. And then I would hit save. And I would hit print. And just as a comparison, over here in Lightroom, if I wanted to um, make the image black and white, and I wanted to print it as a black and white, I would go to Print. I would go ahead and choose that the profile is managed by the printer. Under the Printer category, I would do the same exact thing we just did. Repeat, go to um, Color Matching, choose Epson Controls, Go to print settings, choose black and advanced black and white, and then choose print. Okay. So I hope that uh, covers it. Happy printing.